So, I was doing some research around the Baltic Sea. I found this island here. This is Ruhnu. Like all Estonian islands, Ruhnu has an interesting story. And no history buffs. This isn't about when Ruhnu was contested between Estonia and Latvia in the early 20th century. This story is far more recent. The year is 2006. It's early spring. Some Estonian fishermen are out in their boat trying to get the day's catch. When one of them spots something on the horizon, sitting on floating ice. None of the fishermen can quite make out what it is. One of them takes out their binoculars, but all they can tell is that it's too big to be a human. This was an animal. They call the local Estonian border guard to be safe, and as far as they can tell, that was the end of it. Everyone assumed that whatever it was had died of cold or starvation. Five days later, Rina, a school teacher, is walking along Norkeld Beach with her family when they spot bear tracks. Twelve square kilometers, surrounded by water, 60 inhabitants, and now a Eurasian brown bear, Europe's largest predator. The Ruhnuans didn't panic, though. Still, they did make some lifestyle changes. They now drove more often than they would walk, and they would avoid the forests where they knew the bear frequented. As Sho, an islander, pointed out, we don't leave our garbage outside our houses anymore, but nobody is scared. Children don't wander into the woods alone, but we're not hiding inside. Everybody says the bear is scared himself. In fact, most of the islanders never even saw the bear. Still, they tried to keep it in one area of the island by baiting it with food. It took one month before an operation to take the bear out started. Though, after environmentalists insisted that the bear live, the plan quickly changed from killing the bear to tranquilizing it and moving it off of Ruhnu. According to one islander, 95% of Ruhnuans were in favor of keeping the bear alive. It had become a sort of mascot for the island. This had actually become big news in the small Baltic zone, but the various hunters that came to Ruhnu were unsuccessful in acquiring the bear, and it would continue to roam around the island. That summer of 2006, tourism boomed. Ruhnu saw a huge influx of people who wanted a chance at seeing that bear. In hindsight, this was a perfect storm. Now, there were hundreds of people on the island literally looking for the bear. A disaster was bound to happen. But it didn't. Though, winter was fast approaching. The bear was going to prepare for hibernation soon. It was going to start consuming everything in its path. More hunters came to the island in an attempt to catch it. Then, one day in late October, people came to realize the bear was gone. Some days later, bear tracks are found on Cape Kolka. A few days after that, a bear is spotted near the town of Dundaga in the forests of Corland. Most people are ready to accept that this was the same bear. Let's take a step back from the situation and summarize the official story. A Latvian bear is supposed to have departed from Cape Kolka on the Livonian coast using an ice flow as its mode of transportation. After some amount of time, it arrives on Ruhnu in mid-April. The government spends hundreds of thousands of Estonian kroner to try and get the bear off of Ruhnu, but fail. Seven months later, the bear, presumably due to a lack of food, swims back to mainland Europe. There are a few weird things in this story that are probably setting your investigative alarms off. The first question you may ask is why people automatically assumed the bear found in Latvia was the same one that was on Ruhnu. Aren't there a bunch of bears in Latvia? Well, no, actually. While today there are around 60 bears in Latvia, 
From 2006 to 2009, according to the European Commission's Status Management and Distribution of Large Carnivores, Bear, Lynx, Wolf, and Wolverine in Europe, December 2012 Part 2, which also has this amazing graphic, it's not just that there were only 10 to 15 bears in Latvia, but that there was also no permanent bear population and that they were far rarer in the Corland area than in the east of the country. This is corroborated by contemporary reviews with the deputy head of the Latvian Forestry Service, Janis Ozolinch, who explained that bears are very rare in the area. We also know that the footprints from Ruknu and those from Korland were basically identical in size. So the fact that they found a similar bear at the time they were expecting to find it, in the place they were expecting to find it, is already pretty good evidence. But do we have definitive proof? Luckily, Estonian scientists were all over this question and had collected bear feces samples from both sites. As feces contains DNA, this would be definitive proof whether or not the Ruhnu bear actually made it back to Latvia. Sadly, the feces samples from Ruhnu were frozen for a long period of time which destroyed most of the DNA in them, making them useless. In any case, is it even possible for a brown bear to swim the nearly 40 kilometer distance between Ruhnu and Latvia? This has proved to be one of the most difficult pieces of the puzzle. Brown bears, unlike polar bears, just don't live in areas where they have to swim long distances. This makes it so that we don't really know how long a brown bear can swim for. I tried to find examples of long distance brown bear swims online, but I couldn't find anything near the 40 kilometers required. So, I contacted a couple of Eurasian brown bear experts, John Swenson of the Norwegian University of Life Sciences and Juro Huber from the University of Zagreb. While they both seemed somewhat confident in a bear's ability to swim for very long distances, the longest swim that they had knowledge of was in between Montague Island and Hinchinbrook Island in the Prince William Sound off the coast of Alaska. But even this is only around an 11 kilometer distance, a quarter of what we need. So it's probably possible, and a lot of things do line up. If this is actually what happened, then this would make it the longest swim that we know of that a brown bear has ever completed. That's only the official version of events, and other theories do exist. The most popular, one that has existed since the bear left Ruhnu, is that it was secretly killed by hunters. This theory was mostly researched and developed by Ein Lember in his dramatically titled 2017 article, Did a Bullet End the Ruhnu Bear's Earthly Journey? And while the theory is interesting, no one has actually come forward to say that they were the ones that killed the Ruhnu Bear. Only one shotgun shot was heard on Ruhnu that summer, and the hunters that fired it <laughs> left the same day. Without a bear. The best piece of evidence in favor of the hunted bear theory is that at some point in mid-October, before any reports were made of a bear in Latvia, the islanders were all of a sudden very comfortable entering the forests they were afraid of as if they knew the bear had already been taken care of. But Ruhnu is tiny. If any of the islanders knew the bear was shot, word would have gotten around at some point. There are some other, more fringe theories as well. One goes that the bear actually swam to southern Sweden and attacked a few ostrich farms. Another goes that the Ruhnu bear was a fabricated marketing ploy to attract more visitors to the island. One even goes that the Ruhnu bear was used as a distraction for whenever the People's Union of Estonia, a political party, was running into trouble. Ultimately, whether the bear was shot, didn't exist, or simply drowned in the Gulf of Riga, the cultural impact it made is insane. I found online articles, online articles, from Germany, the United States, the United Kingdom, and even Taiwan about Ruhnu. This event made a folly in Estonia and Latvia. After the bear left, a chocolate maker from Latvia offered the Ruhnuans a large and terrifying chocolate bear, complete with individual teeth. The hilarious reasoning they gave was that chocolate is known to relax and improve mood. Hopefully, our gift will have the same effect, and the residents of Ruhnu will no longer have to be afraid of bears. 
Before the islanders ate it together, a sculptor made Ruknu a wooden version of the same chocolate one. But that's not the end of it. Ruknuwin started celebrating the anniversary of the bear arriving with a small festival and a ceremonial hike. A year later, a Latvian kids show made this adorable stop motion fictionalized version of the whole thing, where I learned that an Estonian farmer might just pack a couple of pickles for lunch. A boat was named after the bear. There was a beer, a detective novel. The most recent article I can find about this event was written in 2018, 12 years after a bear landed on a tiny Estonian island. Now, here I am talking about it today. There's something oddly attention-grabbing about this cute, innocent, and mysterious story. If I had to sum up what I learned, it would probably be that Estonians basically think of Latvia as the poor country to their south, filled with six-toed people who believe that their island was unjustly taken from them. Also, that bears are freaks of nature. 